Cephalic index. The cephalic index or cranial index is the ratio of the maximum width, biparietal diameter or BPD, side to side, of the head of an organism, human or animal multiplied by 100 divided by its maximum length, occipitofrontal diameter or OFD, front to back. The index is also used to categorize animals, especially dogs and cats. The cephalic index was widely used by anthropologists in the early 20th century to categorize human populations, and by Carlton S. Kuhn in the 1960s. It is now mainly used to describe individuals' appearances and for estimating the age of fetuses for legal and obstetrical reasons. The cephalic index was defined by Swedish professor of anatomy Anders Retzius. 1796 to 1860, and first used in physical anthropology to classify ancient human remains found in Europe. The theory became closely associated with the development of racial anthropology in the 19th and early 20th centuries, when prehistorians attempted to use ancient remains to model population movements in terms of racial categories. Humans are characterized by having either a dolichocephalic, long-headed, mesotisophalic, moderate-headed, or brachycephalic short-headed, cephalus index or cranial index. Cephalic indices are grouped as in the following table. Technically, the measured factors are defined as the maximum width of the bones that surround the head above the supermastoid crest, behind the cheekbones, and the maximum length from the most easily noticed part of the glabella, between the eyebrows, to the most easily noticed point on the back part of the head. The usefulness of the cephalic index was questioned by Giuseppe Sergi who argued that cranial morphology provided a better means to model racial ancestry. Also, Franz Boas studied the children of immigrants to the United States in 1910-1912, noting that the children's cephalic index differed significantly from their parents, implying that local environmental conditions had a significant impact on the development of head shape. Boas argued that if craniofacial features were so malleable in a single generation, then the cephalic index was of little use for defining race and mapping ancestral populations. Scholars such as Ernest A. Houghton continued to argue that both environment and heredity were involved. Boas did not himself claim it was totally plastic. In 2002, a paper by Sparks and Chance reevaluated some of Boas' original data using new statistical techniques and concluded that there was a relatively high genetic component of head shape. Ralph Holloway of Columbia University argues that the new research raises questions about whether the variations in skull shape have adaptive meaning and whether, in fact, normalizing selection might be at work on the trait, where both extremes, hyperdolicocephaly and hyperbrachycephaly, are at a slight selective disadvantage. In 2003, anthropologists Clarence C. Gravely, H. Russell Bernard, and William R. Leonard reanalyzed Boa's data and concluded that most of Boa's original findings were incorrect. Moreover, they applied new statistical, computer-assisted methods to Boas data and discovered more evidence for cranioplasticity. In a later publication, Gravely, Bernard and Leonard reviewed Sparks and Jantz analysis. They argued that Sparks and Jantz misrepresented Boas' claims, and that Sparks and Jantz data actually support Boas. For example, they point out that Sparks and Jantz look at changes in cranial size in relation to how long an individual has been in the United States in order to test the influence of the environment. Boas, however, looked at changes in cranial size in relative to how long the mother had been in the United States. They argue that Boas' method is more useful, because the prenatal environment is a crucial developmental factor. Jantz and Sparks responded to Gravely et al., reiterating that Boas' findings lacked biological meaning and that the interpretation of Boas' results common in the literature was biologically inaccurate. In a later study, the same authors concluded that the effects Boas observed were likely the result of population-specific environmental effects such as changes in cultural practices for cradling infants, rather than the effects of a general American environment which caused populations in America to converge to a common cranial type, as Boas had suggested. The cephalic index is used in the categorization of animals, especially breeds of dogs and cats. A brachycephalic skull is relatively broad and short, typically with the breadth at least 80% of the length. Dog breeds such as the pug are sometimes classified as extreme brachycephalic. A mesotisophalic skull is of intermediate length and width. Mesotisophalic skulls are not markedly brachycephalic or dolichocephalic. When dealing with animals, especially dogs, the more appropriate and commonly used term is not mesocephalic, but rather mesotisophalic, which is a ratio of head to nasal cavity. The breeds below exemplify this category.
Note, most cat land races and species are mesotisophallic. A dolichocephalic skull is relatively long skull, typically with the breadth less than 80% or 75% of the length. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.